Hi guys! I'm here with another airbrush video for you. Um, today I thought what we can do is take an airbrush apart just to show you the bits and pieces. Now I'm going to super generalize and say that all airbrushes are kind of constructed the same way and they kind of are. They all have different little bits and pieces but in general they all kind of work the same. So I thought I'd go through this one, the Gravity Feed airbrush with you today. We'll take it all apart and we'll show you everything that's involved inside of it um, and kind of explain what those things are and how they work. So I'm going to flip you around uh, so that you can get a better view and you don't have to look at the airbrush through with my face in the background. So um, I'm just going to flip you around and we'll get started, okay? So this is the airbrush I spoke about in my last video when I was describing gravity feed airbrushes. Um, it is an Iwata Revolution CR. It's a really nice big airbrush and I'm just going to take it apart for you and show you uh, basically the bits that are inside of it. So <clears throat> Let's take this thing apart. So on the back here, there's just a protective cover that protects the back of the needle and that just spins off. A lot of people prefer to work without the um, cover on the back uh, and just have the needle exposed all the time. I think it's a weighting issue, but I find that for this particular airbrush, having the, the, the cover on the back actually makes it hold nicer in your hand. So what this is here, let me get that out of the way keeps rolling. Stay! Stay! This here is the needle. This is a little chuck that holds the needle in place. So if I pull the trigger back and forth, you can see the chuck move and it pulls the needle with it as well. Okay? If I loosen the chuck, then the chuck will move but the needle doesn't. Okay, so that's all it's doing is it's moving when you, it's activating the needle in, with the trigger. If I take the chuck off, then I can pull the needle out. So the needle is like that. Okay, you hear lots of things about these needles and I just wanted to talk uh, really quickly about it. I apologize that my camera will not focus on the needle here, but the needle it has a tapered end. Let's see if you can see that. It won't focus. But it has a tapered end. It's very pointy at the end, so don't stab yourself with it. And there's lots of talk um, when you're new to airbrushing about how delicate these are. They're not that delicate. Like it's it's a fairly you know I'm putting a little bit of pressure on it. Um, it's a fairly robust piece of metal. The only part that's really delicate is the tip. If you bend the tip or you know fold it over, which can happen, um, then you're going to damage your needle and you're going to have to buy a replacement one. But don't be afraid to handle this. Like it's there's there's nothing magical about it. It's just a piece of metal uh, with a tapered end. Um, we'll just move that to the side here. Then what this is, I don't know what it's called, but it basically holds all the trigger and stuff in place. So you can screw this off the back, like such, and it basically kind of looks like a pen inside. So this piece comes off, then there's a spring which allows the trigger to have a spring back and forth action. And then there's this here. What this is, is it's got a little fiddly bit on the end. And this one, this airbrush in particular is really nice because this little fiddly bit is attached to this shaft of metal. Um, sometimes they're loose and oh god, are they hard to put back in. I can show you with another airbrush at another time. But how this, what this is for, I'll just put it back in. Maybe is if you look at the trigger here oh this thing sucks for focusing I'm sorry guys it sits behind the trigger so that little tab right there sits behind the trigger and just helps with the rocking motion of the trigger <clears throat> so that comes out once that's out the whole trigger will just pop right out okay and it's got this little dangly bit on the end here this little dangly bit is actually what activates the air. 
So this fits down inside a hole inside the airbrush and when you push down it's like with a spray can. When you push down on the top of a spray paint can it starts the air flowing. This is the same thing. So it's just like a little button that pushes and allows the air to go through. Um, getting that thing in the hole is sometimes a little tough. That's what she said. And yeah, that's what that is. Okay, now let's look at the front of the airbrush. This right here is a, right, a needle protector. Um, when your needle is in your airbrush, it points out the front of the airbrush a little bit. And I will show you that real quick. Okay, so I've just put the needle back in the airbrush without any of the other stuff in it so that I can show you that the needle sticks out the front. So if you were to drop your airbrush and you didn't have this protector on, the needle... Whoa! Whoa! Come back here. The needle, which will not focus... Oh. See it there? The needle is poking out the front, right? And that's when you can bend over a needle. Um, that's probably the most common uh, way to ruin a needle is you drop your airbrush when that nozzle thing's not on. So you might be asking, why would you ever take that nozzle off? Well, a lot of people prefer to work without the nozzle on for two reasons. One, you can see a lot better um, what's going on in the front of your airbrush while you're painting without the nozzle on. Also, there's this thing called dry tip where you get paint build up on the end of your needle and it makes your um, paint splatter. And so you have to take your fingernail and just wipe off the end of the needle. Well, it's a real pain in the ass to have to screw that thing on and off and on and off all the time. So a lot of people work without it on. Um, but that's how you end up with bent needles too, so it's a do-at-your-own-risk kind of thing. Also this part here, which I have to do with my other hand because it's stronger, this is just a nozzle protector. Okay, so the other one was a needle protector, this is a nozzle protector. And this part in here is your nozzle. And I wish my camera had zoom or could see this a little bit better, but this is the delicate part of your airbrush. I don't know what kind of material this is made out of, um, but it is super precision and it's what's going to get damaged um, next to your needle. This will get damaged first, this will get damaged second. The reason why you might have trouble with your nozzle is because you could end up cracking it. Um, and once this is cracked, there's nothing that you can do to fix it besides replacing it. So be really careful with this little piece right here. Here's how it gets damaged, okay? I'm going to put my airbrush back together really quickly to show you how it gets damaged. Okay. And everything on your airbrush should be finger tight. Um, you don't want to get any wrenches or pliers out or anything or you're just going to end up uh, damaging your airbrush. Plus you have to take it apart pretty much every time you use it to clean it, so uh, might as well make it easy on yourself. So this is how your nozzle, that really delicate part, gets damaged. When you put the needle in, if you just ram it forward um, and put it in there with a lot of force, the end of the needle is tapered, but only a small portion of it actually comes out the nozzle. So if you ram it in there farther, you're going to splay the end of that n nozzle tip and break it. So when you put your needle in, this is the proper way to do it, okay? Or what I've been taught anyways, I don't know whether it's officially proper. You slide it in, and it should go really easily. Some people say you should push the trigger down when you go past the trigger. Um, I don't know if that's something with other airbrushes, but I have no resistance when I go past the trigger whatsoever, so I don't do that. And then you'll feel it stop, okay? So that means that you've hit the end of the nozzle. Now you need to do something called seat the needle. And all you're going to do to do that is give it a little push forward and a twist, and you're seated. That's as much as effort as you need to put into that. Don't go and ram it in there really hard, or it's going to display that nozzle and you're going to have to get a replacement. Once you have the needle in place, just put the chuck on and make sure that everything works properly. My hand is in the way. Everything works properly, then you can put this protective bit on the back and your airbrush is back together. 
As always, I hope that was helpful. Now that you've seen an airbrush taken apart, maybe it's not so intimidating to you, um, or maybe it's more intimidating to you. I'm not sure. But um, if you have any questions about airbrushes and their bits and pieces, feel free to ask me below. I don't know everything about every airbrush. I'll be totally honest with that. I'm not a pro. Um, but, you know, I'd love to try to help or maybe I can point you in the right direction. So leave comments below with questions or if you like the video, whatever, um, that would be great. And I'll link to my website, airbrushguidance.com, in the bottom bar and hopefully you'll go check it out. Thanks guys! Have a good day!